Are you looking to build an incredible career in cloud computing? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. In today's video, we're going to be discussing cloud architect presentation skills, which is one of the most critical skills for cloud architects. In actuality, learning great presentation skills for technology professionals is really one of the most critical tech career skills. And in my career, I have delivered thousands upon thousands of presentations. And as a cloud architect or a thought leader working in technology, presentations are going to be an important part of your job. And if you can master delivering great presentations, your career will rise and it will rise very quickly. Now, we have a four-step process that we recommend for delivering a perfect technology presentation. And our strategy involves, realistically speaking, four stages. The first stage involves planning your presentation. The next phase re revolves around preparing your presentation. The phase after that involves practicing your presentation. And then lastly, we're going to present. And that's our stage. So let's talk about what we recommend doing at each stage. Because if you can deliver an incredible presentation, it can help you get hired, it can help you get promoted. If you're working in sales and increase your sales, great presentation skills are critical to anyone's technology career. And they're especially critical for your cloud computing career or your cloud architect career. So let's start with the plan. Realistically speaking, if you plan your presentation, it's just gonna flow better. So when you plan your presentation, what do you start with? What is your objective in mind? What is the goal that you're looking for? What is the outcome that you're looking for? Your presentation should build upon the outcome you're looking for. The outcome could be to buy your technology solution. The outcome could be to implement a security protocol that you desire, but there should always be a plan and a purpose to your presentation. And your purpose and your plan should guide your users to get them to the destination. You start out at point B and the point A and the purpose of the presentation is to guide them to point B. That's your presentation, so make sure that's part of your plan. Now, in order to plan this out, you really want to research your audience as much as possible. How old are they? How educated are they? What are they made up? What do they like? What do they dislike? Learn as much as you can about the audience so that you can position your presentation in a manner that's going to resonate well with your audience because this is really important. For example, if I was going to Greece, I would not deliver a presentation in English. I would deliver it in Greece, assuming I spoke Greek, which I do. Why? Because I want to deliver it in the language of my audience. I want to deliver the message in something my audience cares about. The things that a CEO cares about, for example, are very different than what an implementation engineer cares about. So I need to know who's in the audience so I can cater my message to the audience so I can deliver the right message to the right person at the right time. Now, I also need to really consider on Plaza planning, where's the location going to be? Is it via Zoom? In which case, you know, I may do it a certain way. Isn't it a 10,000 person audience? If so, I'm going to have to deliver the presentation differently. I might have to focus on different corners of the room to create some sort of level of eye contact, which is necessarily impractical in an audience that size, but I still might need to do it. I might have to accommodate for outside sizes. So in the plan, realistically, what you're going to look for is the objective that you have for the presentation, because your presentation should meet some point or an objective. Then you're going to research the audience so you know how to best communicate with the audience. And from there, you need to know where the location of the, the place is going to be, the venue, if you will, so you know how to optimize your presentation. Now that you've done your planning and you know your outcomes and where your location is going to be, now you're going to have to prepare the presentation. If you don't prepare it, it's going to look like you created it on the fly and that's not going to deliver the perfect message. So first and foremost, organize your flow. And the flow of your presentation should be as follows. First and foremost, tell the audience what you're going to tell them. Then present your material. And then after you've presented your, presented your material, again, tell the audience what you've told them. So summarize. So here's what it's looks going to look like. First, tell them what you're going to tell them, present your material, and then tell them what you've told them. So summarize. Now, that's the way you should flow in a presentation, but what should the flow inside of the presentation look like? Well, when you're a technology professional, maybe you're a cloud architect, you're a cloud engineer, you could be a network architect, it really doesn't matter. But when you're presenting technology, some of these technology things are fairly complicated. And different people in your audience are going to have different things that they care about. 
Business executives, and this is the way we recommend all cloud architects and all technology professionals present by starting with a solution and then showing substantiating evidence. Now you find that engineers often talk about all the evidence and mounds and mounds of evidence before they get to the solution. The problem is many people will tune out before they get to the solution. So remember the whole point of a presentation is to have an outcome in mind, to guide a user from one way of thinking to another way of thinking, or to guide the user why the architecture you designed is what's right for their solution. So present it like an executive. First and foremost, the flow really needs to be, what is your solution? Then provide your substantiating evidence as to why your solution is right. Now, when you're going to do this, you know, this is where you have the opportunity to cover three to six pieces of evidence why your rationale is right. Why do I say three to six? You should never go above six because the human brain can remember four to six things at a time and no more. So the second you go above six, you've lost your audience. So never go above six. Four to six is the max. You know, three to five is probably a really good number. So start with your main content and then provide your substantiating evidence and now summarize the solution. And that's it. So basically start with the solution, provide your substantiating evidence, and then summarize why your solution was right again, just like the format of the presentation. Now that you've done this, now that you've prepared your presentation, now you gotta go practice it because we want this to be perfect. Now when it comes to practice, practice makes permanent. So if you're doing something wrong, you're gonna make it consistently wrong. Perfect practice by comparison makes things perfect. So you really want to going to want to practice this and you're going to want to try and get some feedback along the way. So I'll tell you what we mean by the practice. Now, first and foremost, when it comes to communication, here's what the data from Harvard suggests. When we're presenting, 55% of the presentation is what we look like when we say something. Now, 38% is what we sound like when we say something, and 7% is your actual content. So if you're gonna deliver a great presentation, remember your appearance matters, your body language matters, your gestures matter, your stance matters. For example, if I stand like this, I don't look very powerful or capable. But if I stand like this and ready for action and I take up more space, I do. So in this practice step, you know, practice gestures, do they help, do they take away? Vary your vocal tones, really try and deliver a full presentation that involves audio, video, and of course your content. And that's based gonna be about what you look like and when you sound like when you say something. Practice these things, but also whenever possible, try to integrate a true story that your audience will be able to connect to. Sometimes you can talk about a solution and you can talk about a rationale why, but you need a story to drive the points home. And storytelling, assuming it's authentic and real, is a very powerful way to communicate your message and could and should be integrated in presentations when appropriate. Now, if you're gonna integrate stories in your presentations, it's really important, they must be authentic. Never lie as part of your presentation. Be authentic, that's really what matters. People can feel it when you're not authentic. They can feel it when you're disingenuine and they're not gonna like it. So practice your gestures, practice your vocal tones, try to practice a story to try and sell your points, but remember to be authentic. Now in this practice phase, video record yourself if you can and then use that as feedback to deliver a much better presentation. And if you're not recording yourself, Present to some friends or some peers or some people along the way that can say, I like this, I don't like this, and tune it. Because realistically speaking, in this practice, you want to get better. You want to work towards that perfect practice. Now that you've planned it and you've prepared it and you've practiced it, it's showtime. Now you're going to deliver your presentations. So when you deliver your presentations, a couple of things. First and foremost, try and grab the audience and bring them to you as fast as possible. Why? Because if you don't grab their attention quickly, they're not gonna pay attention and the presentation doesn't mean anything. So try and grab them as fast as possible. Now in your intro, get to the point and fast. People have very short attention spans, especially busy people. And the higher you move up the executive ranks, the shorter the attention span is gonna be. Now these are very smart people. They don't have a short attention span because they have attention deficit disorder. What happens is when you have a thousand phone calls and emails coming in per day and you've got 20 meetings that take up your entire day, your evenings and your weekends, you're busy, so you don't have a lot of time. So get to the point quick, drag them in, and they're gonna be listening to you. Now, when you're speaking, try to use different language styles. There's visual learners, there's kinesthetic learners, there's auditory learners, and make sure you're communicating in the language of your audience. Visual people typically dress nice, 
Visual people talk about things like, I see what you mean. Visual people have organized offices and they tend to have things that look attractive. And when you're dealing with visual people, which by the way is the majority of the population, you need to communicate using visual terms. I see what you mean. See, if you adopt this solution, you're gonna be in a much better place. You know, add the words that are involved vision for visual people. Now, when you're dealing with auditory people, auditory people learn via listening. They say things like, I hear you. They listen to a lot of music. They learn via sound. So communicate things using sound type terms. So you capture the auditory people and also capture the kinesthetics. Kinesthetic people basically feel things. And your kinesthetic person will say, I feel you because they're communicating that they feel what you're saying. The kinesthetic person will often wear soft clothes. The kinesthetic person likes the way things feel. So when you're dealing with three various populations and you're gonna deal with all of the audience, make sure you communicate. Talk about the visual terms, talk about the auditory terms, talk about the kin kinesthetic terms, and the people along the way are gonna be bought in and they're gonna listen. So when you're delivering your presentation, you know, make sure you address all the people in the audience. Make sure you're authentic. Use an authentic story to drive your point home. And you know, make sure you're communicating across all things. Now, there are people that, that have some anxiety around speeches. Uh, if you do, use some type of uh, relaxation technique. Use some breathing techniques. Uh, and they can assist you in relaxation during delivering a presentation. But when you're presenting, if you lose your train of thought, just pause for a second, take a deep breath, and recapture it. During the presentation, if you miss a word, that's OK. Keep going. The show must go on. So today we talked about how you deliver a perfect technology presentation to boost your cloud architect career or your cloud computing career. Because regardless of your career, whether you're a cloud architect, solutions architect, network engineer, working on your presentation skills should be a critical part of your tech career development program. Let me tell you about some things we do at Go Cloud Architects to help the cloud architect community. Every Monday, and every Thursday, we have a completely free how to get your first cloud architect job webinar. And on these how to get your first cloud architect job webinars, we teach you everything you need to get hired. We teach you what hiring managers desire. We teach you what counts as experience and how to get it. We teach you how to be the hiring manager's dream hire. We teach you what hiring managers desire. And we teach you everything that you would need to know to get your first cloud architect job and so many more things. And we do this for free on Monday and Thursday. And we even spend one hour answering any tech questions that you have. Now, every Tuesday morning, we actually have a cloud architect experience webinar. And we'll do one of these two things. We will talk about the kind of labs that employers will look at and say, wow, so you can get hired, as well as how you can actually learn how to be a cloud architect and how you can learn how to be cloud architect competent. We talk about this on these calls. Many of these Tuesdays, we do free cloud architect architecture challenges where we'll basically give you some customer requirements and you'll as a team get to design this architecture just like you would in your own cloud architect job. So we're really working on building your cloud computing careers in any of these free webinars that we do. Now on most Wednesdays, we do a completely free cloud architect quest career question and answer session, in which case you can ask us any questions you have about building your cloud architect career or how to get your first cloud architect job or how to get your first cloud job or how to get it promoted in technology or the things that you need to learn. We do this completely free most Wednesdays. If you have any questions, you can send an email to ask cloud Mike. And if you send any email question, any email to ask cloud Mike about some things, we will pro we'll do the best we can to make a YouTube video for you to help answer your cloud architect or your tech career questions. I'd like to thank you so much for watching this video. It is a real pleasure and an honor and a true privilege to be part of the cloud computing community. And I am so thankful to be here. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in another video very soon.